The Griffith Park Traverse is a challenging and unique hike that crosses Griffith Park and visits most of its peaks, while also visiting the iconic Hollywood sign and Griffith Observatory. The trail is about 7 miles one way with 2,000 feet of gain and it can be done as a long out and back or with a ride share to the start. There are a few sketchy parts of this trail, but it's a fantastic adventure and one of the best trails in Los Angeles. Just don't do it when it's hot as there's no shade. Here's all the information on this great Griffith Park Trail. We started by arriving early and parking a car at the parking lot by the merry-go-round. Good morning, it's 6.30 and we are starting the adventure. After parking, we walked to the intersection and called an Uber and it took about 10 minutes for it to arrive in the early morning. Only in LA do we grab an Uber to get to the start of our trail. There's our Uber. 17 dollars and 15 minutes later we are walking through the gate and starting the hike up to the wisdom tree. The drop off here is called the Wonder View Trailhead. Starting our Griffith Park Traverse. Alright so if you guys saw the California bucket list video then you know we uh, hiked up to the wisdom tree and that's where this hike is starting too so basically just straight up to the wisdom tree. These are the first three peaks we're doing, Burbank, Coanga, and Mount Lee. It's only about a half mile to get to the Wisdom Tree, but it's about 600 feet of elevation and it goes up pretty much the entire way. It's pretty that there's some wildflowers and it's a nice morning where you can hear the birds. It doesn't make LA seem so crazy right now. It was a beautiful time to be hiking and we had wildflowers around us pretty much the entire day. It didn't take long for us to gain enough elevation to start seeing the sun and it was about 7.15 when we were here. I thought it'd be a little longer before we made it into the sunrise. There's not a lot of shade on this trail so that's why we started so early. It's going to be a hot day I think. Check it out, it's purple and yellow for the Lakers. As we continued up we were surrounded by tall yellow mustard plants and I'm pretty sure that once it gets hotter this is going to dry out and be pretty overgrown. Man, it is such a pretty time to be here. I haven't been here in the spring with all these flowers and it's all green. You guys look at that, the mountain layers, the cross, Griffith Observatory, and downtown LA sticking up. That's a sight I've never seen before. We even got some California poppies. It's always cool when you see the California poppy. You guys, I can't get over this today. If you watched the other video with Amy and I, the trail looked nothing like this. And it is just, every bend is beautiful. I mean, look, there's some purple flowers right there. Get ready, because I'm going to be talking about flowers the entire video, but it was an incredible time to be here, and spring is definitely a nice time to hike in Griffith Park. Also, we are almost done with the first 600 feet. That's the direction that we're heading, but we got to get peak number one first, which is right there. Jared, we've officially made it. To peak number one. Ten more to go. Ten more to go. Sitting at 1,690 feet, this is the top of Burbank Peak, our first of the 11 peaks. From here, it was incredible to see the views out towards downtown LA and the sea of clouds that was in front of us. Peak number one, next peak is that one, and then that one is the back of the Hollywood sign and Mount Lee. All right, Jared, you ready for peak number two? From here, the trail heads out toward Coanga Peak on the Alien Getty Ridge Trail. Basically, the entire rest of the trail, you're going to be above the clouds and have amazing views in every direction. All this fog makes me feel like we're in higher elevation mountains than we actually are. Over there, it looks like we're up really high, and then over there, it doesn't. The trail here is easy to follow, but let this be my first of many reminders that you need an all trails map. It's incredibly easy to get lost, especially on further parts of the trail. Yeah, peak number two. Woo! Kawanga Peak. We started way down there. That was peak number one. And here we are, Jared taking a selfie on peak two. And then there's peak three, right there. Kawanga Peak is the tallest of the park's peaks at 1,820 feet. The views from up there are not as good as they were along the ridge trail, and then on the way down you have to watch out because it can be a little bit slippery. If you're doing this and you're a little unsure on your footing, this is definitely the sketchier part. You kind of have to down climb just a teeny bit to get down to the trail. 
It's very manageable, that section, but it is steep. And then you have to go back up to get over there. While there aren't any sections with six to 800 feet of elevation gains, again, there's tons of up and downs the entire trail. Basically, you're going up one peak and immediately back down before you go up another. First view of the Hollywood sign. We have made it to the road that takes us to the Hollywood sign and Mount Lee. As you leave the ridge trail, you'll be on a paved road called Mount Lee Drive, which takes you all the way to the summit. This road goes along the backside of the Hollywood sign and then ends at a dirt path that goes up to a small hill for a good view. Peak number three. Good job, bro. Mount Lee. That was hard. And the Hollywood sign. Normally this place is swarming with people, but it's about eight o'clock right now, so nobody's here. We actually got the bench. We're gonna have a little bit of snack before we continue on. I've never seen it like this before. I've seen it a lot of times in downtown LA, but it's pretty cool to be able to see that fog. See Griffith Observatory just sitting out there in like a sea of fog. And to see the skyscrapers poking out just a teeny bit. Heading on to peak number four, and I think this is one of the longest ones we're gonna do. Mount Lee sits at 1,680 feet, and it's definitely worth doing, especially if you've never seen the Hollywood sign from this angle. Plus, there's even some wildflowers near the Hollywood sign, which is a sight to see. This is the part of the trail I don't know, so from here on out, I'm basically gonna be following my phone to make sure I don't miss any of the cutoffs to get to the other peaks. We're on this paved section for just a little bit before we have to hit some type of spur. There's a pretty good view of our next few peaks that we're gonna hit. One, two, three. Sadly, our nice time on the paved road has come to an end, and we're taking that cutoff right there up to Mount Chapel. While most of the park's main trails are on dirt roads, this trail only hits the dirt roads a little bit before going off on single track spurs up to the different peaks. Also, the hike from the Wisdom Tree to Mount Lee is popular and well-traveled, but these next four peaks don't get the same amount of visitors and they're a lot more rugged. That's another trail that will take you to the Hollywood sign. You can watch a video on that right here. It goes to the old Batman caves as well. And Jared just looked up what this plant is called, which looks like it has spider webs all inside of it. What's it called, Jared? It's called the Cobweb Thistle. Cobweb Thistle. That's a fitting name. On this part of the trail, there were more poppies and wildflowers to see, which was cool. It was a good steep uphill though, and relatively overgrown in sections, so I was glad I had a map to follow. This trail is basically scrambling from here. All the way up there. Well, that one was an adventure with all of the bushwhacking. Peak number four. Yay! Peak number four was Mount Chapel, which sits at 1,614 feet. Unfortunately, that elevation that we gained, we have to lose because we're going down all the way down there and then up to those peaks. This peak had a really cool view of Mount Hollywood and Griffith Observatory out in the distance, and it was pretty steep to get down and definitely a good one to have hiking poles on. Overall, having a hiking pole is nice on this trail as you'll use it a lot on the downhill parts. This hike is a ton of fun. It's cool to see Griffith Park like this, to see all the views. I can't believe I'm doing this hike in Los Angeles. If you're doing the trail without taking an Uber, this is where the trail would loop. So you would hike up on the B-Rock Trail, which you don't see in this video, and then you would go all the way out to the Wisdom Tree and back, and then you'd go around to Mount Hollywood and the others and return to the merry-go-round parking area. Getting a little tired, but luckily there's a power-up I can take right here. Just joking, don't graffiti things, it's not cool. <laughs> so according to all trails, we're on top of Mount Baby Bell, so uh, I guess peak number five. Woo! But I don't really know if this qualifies as a peak or not. I don't see any markers. Onward to the next one, which is actually Mount Bell right in front of us. What qualifies as a peak? Let me know in the comments. I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> I'm not sure what the elevation of that one is as it doesn't show up on the park map, but it was easy to get to the top of and then we headed back down the other side. We're only on the nice dirt road for 30 seconds before we apparently have to go up this steep trail. Just another reminder that you really can't do this without a map. There was no signs or anything for this trail, but it was on the map up to Mount Bell. 
All the trails we're doing in this video were on the map and they were all worn trails that showed other people had hiked them. It's also not meant for tall people. <sighs> we made it to peak six. That was a tough one. Mount Bell sits at 1,582 feet. While I wouldn't say that this trail is incredibly tough, it's definitely got really steep sections and there's no switchback. So you're going straight up and straight down. So it's tougher than it looks on a map. You can see all the different trails that go through Griffith Park. There are so many ways to get up a lot of these mountains and just to experience this beautiful natural area. From there, we made our way back down another steep trail with lots of wildflowers and great views. Eventually, it connected with a dirt road again, which I didn't see a name for on the map, but which was heading towards North Trail. Made it back to the road again, and we are heading on to Taco Peak. I really hope there's tacos up there. Jared's describing how this is actually called Taco Peak. My guess is this is one of the taco shells, and then the trail at the other side of the taco shell. That's where all the meat and goodness is out in the middle. This is the meat area right here? Yep. Confirmed. Taco Peak was a nice quick climb up to the summit. This is not a trail I'll do in the summer. It's 10 o'clock in March and it's hot. Taco Peak actually has something on top of it. Looks like a old military bunker or something. We've made it to peak number seven. Yeah. <laughs> Taco Peak sits at 1,572 feet and you can even start to see the Hollywood sign from here. As you make your way down from Taco Peak, you'll connect to North Trail. We're leaving the single tracks behind for a little bit. We get to walk this nice dirt road all the way up to the top of Mount Hollywood. This is a pretty awesome area for views looking back the way you came and down towards Bee Rock. Three peaks left, one's right there. The other two are out there. And then we parked right down there. That's the other peak that people do, Bee Rock, if you want to do 12, but it's closed right now because of the birds nesting. I'll play a few clips from up there, because Jared and I did that like a year ago. Yeah. Something like that. And it is really cool when it's open. I think Mount Hollywood's gonna be the easiest summit we've done all day. We just got to walk a dirt road all the way to the top. Once you make it to Mount Hollywood, you'll no doubt be greeted by a lot of other people who are doing this hiking trail. The hike up to the top of Mount Hollywood is popular for workouts, running, and just people looking to get out. Peak number eight. Mount Hollywood is a personal favorite of mine as the views from up here are some of the best that you can get in all of Los Angeles. You can see the Hollywood sign, the observatory, downtown LA, and even out to the ocean if it's clear. I especially love hiking up here for sunset. Next stop, right. As you make your way back down and right before you connect with the Hogback Trail, you'll see Dante's View. This was named after a man who loved Griffith Park and who came up here and created this beautiful garden. It was severely damaged in a fire, but it's still beautiful and it's maintained by the friends of Dante's View. If you're looking for a good spot to rest on the Mount Hollywood hike or this hike we're doing today, there's shade and picnic benches here. We had our snacks at Mount Hollywood, but I probably would have came down and done it at Dante's View. Lots of picnic benches, nice views, really relaxing area. Continuing on, you'll be hiking the Hogback Trail for the next two peaks. This trail has a stunning exposed ridgeline, which is fun to hike and has great views in both directions. I know I already said this, but I'm gonna say it one more time. Do not do this in the summer. It will be way too hot. It is very hot today at 75 degrees. Along the way, there's a little spur trail that goes up to another high point only about 25 feet above the trail. Supposedly this is another peak, but again, it wasn't on the map. So according to all trails, this is the peak, Hogback Peak, number nine. But we don't know if it's an actual peak or not. I had never hiked the Hogback Trail before, but I know it's a popular one, and it's easy to see why, as it was a pretty sweet trail. After leaving Hogback Peak, going to Glendale Peak, the all trails map actually goes way down into that valley and up and around but i mean assuming it's open which it is today you can take this hogback trail which is much quicker to get to glendale peak this is a really cool ridge line that we're on you can see b rock really great down there 
Plus you can see this cool ridge line going out in front of you and down into downtown LA on that side. I really like this hike. It's, it's a little tough, but it is a lot of fun. The nice thing about doing the trail the way that we did is that from Mount Hollywood, it's basically all downhill all the way back to the car. This was especially great because it was getting hot later in the day and it allowed us to just soak in the views without having to exert too much energy. I love that peak and that peak, but you can see the parking lot where we parked right down there. Check it out, there's a bridge. I was pretty surprised to see this bridge way up on the hogback trail, but it was nice because it allowed us to cross a ravine that would have been a lot of down and up climbing if it wasn't there. If anybody has any information on this bridge, let me know in the comments as I couldn't find anything online. Definitely the nicest trail sign we've ever seen, Glendale Peak. After all the peaks you've already done, Glendale Peak is actually a pretty easy one going this direction as it's straightforward and it gets climbed a lot. Look at how many wildflowers are on the trail. Look at all the white and the purple and the yellow. There's even some poppies up by Jared. This one little spot going up to Glendale Peak and the part at the beginning near the Wisdom Tree were the two best places I saw wildflowers on this hike. Made it to peak number 10. Glendale Peak wins my peak award. Climbing up here with all the wildflowers and the view of Griffith Observatory. That's my favorite peak so far. One left. If you're doing this hike, I highly recommend just going back out the way that you came for Glendale Peak and not continuing on like we did. You'll see why in a second. So this is the part after Glendale Peak, which is very, very sketchy. This part was about a 40 foot climb down and it was relatively vertical with lots of loose footholds. Jared and I both made it down without any problems, but I would recommend you don't go this way. Woo! Nice work, Jared. That's the side we came down right there. Once we made it down, we connected with Vista Del Valle Drive, a paved road. We made it to a popular viewpoint. You can just barely see downtown LA today, but you can see Griffith Observatory. It's beautiful. It was pretty hazy for us, but I imagine this would be an amazing view of the downtown LA skyscrapers if it was clear. There were a decent amount of people up here just hanging out, reading books, and soaking in the views. Heading into our last peak of the trail, and then we're heading back to the merry-go-round parking lot. From here, we left the crowds behind to finish our last mile hiking the Griffith Park Traverse. This is a nice downhill portion of the trail and it's like the first shade we've had the entire trail. <laughs> One last uphill push and then it's back to our car. This feels steep after all we've done. <laughs> after the short uphill, we made it to the 1,100 foot Beacon Hill and the freeways came into view. We have made it. Peak 11. Woo! Only thing left, let's go get some lunch. Unfortunately, I do have to say the last peak was relatively anticlimactic with lots of trees and not great views. From here, we took a spur trail down to the parking lot and again, make sure you have a map so you know where you're going. These trails don't have any signs and are easy to miss. If you look way out in the distance, you can see that bridge that we crossed up there. After passing another small collection of poppies, we finally saw the parking lot, went down to the dirt road that connects to it, and ended our hike. I decided to extend this video a little bit longer since I know you guys love seeing lunch spots. Made it down to the Arts District in LA to one of my favorite places to have lunch, and then there's also a great ice cream spot here since it's so hot, and we did a lot of miles of hiking. I always butcher the name of this place, so I'm not even going to try, but they make awesome sausages and it's a great spot for lunch in the Arts District. They have all sorts of crazy sausages here, even one with rattlesnake and rabbit, plus they have a bunch of different mustards that you can put on it. Health food. So good. If I'm ever in the Arts District, it's pretty hard to pass up one of my favorite ice cream places, Salt and Straw, so we ended our day with a scoop. I got the cinnamon snickerdoodle. Is it good? Perfect. <laughs> That's it for our LA adventure. I have to say that was an iconic trail, being able to see Griffith Observatory, the Hollywood sign, and just have that experience in LA is something I would not forget. Two things. First, 
I would say when you go down Glendale, just go back the way you came. Don't go down the sketchy part. Second, wear long pants. It's uh, definitely a lot of overgrown plants there, so you don't want to scratch your Jared wore long pants. I did not. Lastly, go early. It's going to get hot. There's no shade. But overall, that is one of the best hikes I've ever done in Los Angeles. Let me know what you think in the comments, and we will see you on the next one.